Welcome to the Fear Nuts Hour, the best half hour show on the internet. Or oh, thereabouts. Cut me off. <laughs> restart. Okay. okay, restart. Let's do this. Welcome to the Fear Nuts Hour, the best half hour show on the internet. I'm C. Brandon Stevens, aka Mr. Beat Nuts. And I'm Alan, and the show might be half hour to an hour. We'll play it It'll right be here. somewhere around there. Today's topics. Um, let's start off by discussing our favorites of uh, 2011. Um, we'll start with music, because that will probably incur the least rants, and then we'll move on to uh, movies, and games tend to inspire rants here, so we'll save that for last. Yes, yes. Uh, so, to start off with, uh, once again, music. Best album of the year. I would have to go with, right at the end of the year, Skrillex put out Bangarang. And I was living in California last year and got really burnt out on dubstep, in particular Skrillex. But my big complaint about Skrillex's first album was it took a long time to bubble up. And in Bangarang, it's just constant bass attack. And I gotta love that. Well... As the hardcore nerd, obviously, uh, my choice is Mega Rans and Lost Perceptions, Black Materia, Final Fantasy VII album. It mixes Nobuo Uematsu's soundtrack from Final Fantasy VII with some fantastic rapping. Uh, it is amazing. Definitely look it up on uh, Spotify if you have that, or you can check out a lot of the stuff on YouTube. Uh, very good. Now, did you have any albums that, like, disappointed you or were just crap that you wish you hadn't have bought? Uh, I didn't buy it, but I was very disappointed with LMFAO's second album. I but, completely agree with that. Uh, Their that first had, album, like, so much better. Yeah, the first album was really good. The second album, you know, Sexy and I Know It, obviously that's a fun song. Right. Uh, they have some good stuff on there, but overall it was pretty pretty weak. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely pop. It was like LMFEO had been taken over by Britney Spears producer or something and that I thought was really weak. But I had two that actually disappointed the hell out of me more. And uh, that was, I don't know if you heard the Best of DMX album. I used to be a big DMX fan. The Best of album and this actually kind of relates to the other one too. But the Best of album for some reason, he put it out with some remixes, and dubstep was really hot this year. So what does he go with? He goes with, like, 95-era synth techno fucking trance music. It was horrible, and it just sounded like DMX had been mixed up by a gay club DJ. And, I mean, it just it didn't work at all. And then Korn knew that dubstep was hot. So they tried to just say, hey, Skrillex, we want you on every fucking track, even though it doesn't mash up with Korn at all. So that was just a fucking yeah, atrocity. Uh, Korn has not made anything good since the mid-90s. No, no, no. And they actually did work with uh, Britney Spears' producer, I believe. <laughs> and that, and that album is... was hardly more horrible than this one. This one was pretty bad, too. And I do want to throw two honorable mentions in for good music, though. Um... And that's uh, Hell, the sequel by Bad Meets Evil. I know you're not much into hip-hop, but if you are, that was a really good album last year. And Mustard Pimp, who's a DJ, put out a track with Jimmy Urin, who I know you have a vendetta against. Uh, Jimmy Urin's an asshole. self-indulgence. Uh, it's called Money Shot, and it was really good. So uh, The one honorable mention I have is, of course, my girl Kay Flay who uh, you can actually download several EPs from her website, kflay.com. They're free to download. Uh, some really great stuff on there. She also has a YouTube channel that you can see some uh, her videos. Very entertaining. Uh, probably the best female MC in the world, if you ask me. Okay, so that puts us on. Let's, let's go with movies. Movies next. Um, now, I've got... Some good picks. I got uh, 13 Assassins. Is uh, I don't think Brandon's seen it, but it's a really good that. movie. It's basically a two-hour movie that is an hour build-up to an hour gory 
action, sword fighting, blood slinging, ass stabbing, adventure, fucking battle. And it's just amazing. An hour build up and you're like, when the first hour passes, you're like, there's no fucking way they're getting ready to enter the final battle. Something's going to come up and it's going to prolong it or like fucking push it back. No, they are getting into the final battle. Hour of awesome glory warfare. Then, I want to mention Drive. Uh, a little slow-paced for some people, but I never thought I would see Albert Brooks play a badass that scares Ron Perlman. But in the movie, he pulls it off really well. He really does. And uh, my last one is The Guard, which uh, I know you've also seen. Yes. And hilarious. Great. It's, a, it's a little British movie, um, and... It is just fucking hilarious. Like, it just hits you with humor out of nowhere. Like, they'll be sitting there having a cup of coffee. Next thing you know, racist jokes. And they just... It just blindsides you, and you can't help but laugh. And you love the two guys, and it. it's a great buddy cop movie. It's uh, Don Cheadle and... Uh, Don Cheadle, and I forget the other guy's name. Uh, he's been in a ton of stuff, though. He, he like, was Mad-Eye Moody, is what yeah, probably most people know him from. That's what everybody here is going to know him uh, from. Harry Butthole uh, Pussy Potter. I can't think of his actual name either, but, uh, yeah, he's he's a great actor. Uh, I, well, I'll look up his name yes. while you go on your list uh, there. I will throw in, in Bruges, is a couple years older, but he was in that, and actually, uh, that was, that was a great movie, so... Uh, if you get a chance to check out The Guard or In Bruges, definitely check those out. Uh, my movie of the year was something I actually saw in 2010, but finally, finally got released in 2011. And it's Tucker and Dell vs. Evil. This is an amazing movie. Uh, it stars Alan Tudyk and Tim LeBang, or Tyler LeBang, who is a Canadian actor. He's been in several things. Uh, very, very talented. And obviously, uh, Alan Tudyk is Wash from Firefly, one of the greatest shows ever. Uh, basically, they play these two rednecks who are just going out. Uh, they recently purchased this fixer-up vacation home. And uh, these college kids are going out there to party. And they think the rednecks are out there to rape and murder. So uh, this big mix-up happens where one of the girls falls, hits her head, and they actually rescue her. But they think they kidnapped her. So the rest of the movie is the kids trying to save their friend from these crazy rednecks, and then just non-stop hilarity ensues. Yeah, it's a good mix of horror comedy. Um, definitely the best thing since Scary Movie 2, because as we all know, Scary Movie th 3 through 37 was fucking horrible, and uh, Shaun of the Dead's about the only other good entry into the genre in forever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really good. I can definitely agree with that. Do you have any more good picks? Uh, good picks. Uh, I really like Unraku, which is uh, with Josh Hartnett, Woody Harrelson, and uh, one of my favorite performers of uh, music, Gact, from Japan. Uh, this is a very stylized, very cool comic book style movie about uh, a world where guns have become kind of outlawed and like universally disarmed, but it showed that even without weapons, we're going to find ways to kill each other. So it, well, not without weapons. Well, with the, not with, without weapons, firearms. No guns. Yeah, okay. Without firearms. Okay. Uh, so basically, it's back to the old uh, King of the Hill days, where Ron Perlman plays the biggest badass in the area, and basically has his gang go around and crush anyone who tries to challenge them. And it is set in Arlen, Texas. It is not <laughs> set in Arlen, Texas. King of the Hill. <laughs> Okay, now um, I think we can take a, a brief moment to go over uh, what we have in common with the Oscars, uh, their greatest picture list. Um, well, we saw Moneyball. We, we did see Moneyball. That was the one we saw that, uh, that the Oscars picked, and it's a movie about baseball. And, and math. Uh, and math. And math. And it's got Brad Pitt, and... Uh, What's his name? The guy that used to be fat, now he's getting all skinny. Yeah. I cannot remember from his name. From Superbad. Yeah, I don't care what he does, he's going to be that guy from Superbad. He's Super the guy Bad. from Superbad. But, uh, yeah, it was it was okay, but, yeah. I mean, it's about baseball and math. What can they really do with it? And I mean, I, I'm a bigger sports fan than Alan, and 
I enjoyed it. It was well acted, but I mean, it's still. I mean, if you're talking about great sports movies, you know, you have like Hoosiers and Rudy, which were so much better than what Moneyball brought to the table. Well, and what they're actually trying to compare it to is Social Network, and I don't think that it can be compared at all. Social Network was good, it was clever, it was kind of edgy, you know. They had more depth. These guys, they tend to either be right or wrong, or wrong long enough to learn that they're wrong and then become right. There doesn't really seem to be any gray area. So yeah, Maybe we don't know the inner workings of Major League Baseball well enough to get a lot of the subtle nuances in the movie, but uh, overall it was definitely not best picture worthy, and I feel Brad Pitt also as uh, getting a little bit of a bump for best actor, but at the same time it is the only movie I've seen that's in the list for best picture so far. Well, he's also in it for that tree movie. I think he's a lumberjack or something. I, I don't know what that is. It's the tree, the tree of life. life. Yeah. I, I know of it, but I don't actually know what that okay, movie is Okay, anyway, about. onward and downward. Uh, we were talking about the movie that we hated the most this year, and we agreed on this one. Insidious. Insidious. Now, so many people told me that this movie was scary as shit, and oh my god, you gotta see Insidious, man. You'll be fucking freak out. No, gay Darth Maul, fucking Freddy Krueger, yeah, the not... Freddy Krueger fingernails kicking. Yeah, it, it, oh. I mean, well, like it was bad enough when, like, Liberace Maul was supposed to be the bad guy or Darth Liberace, whatever you want to call him, when he was supposed to be the main bad guy. But then they're like, no, wait, we got something scarier, an old lady. Like, no, that's. Horrible. Uh, Just horrible. Yeah, it was very predictable. It was never scary. No. Like you, you're you a teenage girl. Even if you're a 30-year-old man, you found that movie scary. You are a teenage girl if you found that movie scary, even remotely scary. I don't think teenage girls can feel good about finding that movie scary. Basically, you are an infant, because that was it, the boogeyman. It, it, was it was poorly just... written. It was poorly acted. It was poorly paced. It was just an awful movie from beginning to end. Now, I wouldn't say all poorly acted. The main guy did what he could, he, but what could he do with that? Yeah. You I, can only I, polish I, a turd right. so much and I then will, throw Darth Maul makeup on it and call it a movie. I will agree with that. All right, uh, last movie well, rant. Uh, yeah, I, I want to add in my most disappointing movie of the year, um, Thor. Oh, yeah. Uh, Thor was not a bad movie, but... I love Thor. The character Thor is my favorite comic book character, and he has some epic stories. The movie was not a Thor movie. The movie was some good-looking blonde guy with no shirt on, with no superpowers, for 90% of it. Just walking around, flirting with Natalie Portman. Well, which no, I wouldn't go so far as 90%, because the first like third of the movie, the he first was on third, yeah, his it, world. The... Ice Golem fight, which happens about 15 minutes in, is amazing. See, that, that was what there, I think it just was shoots downhill. Yeah, they, they started off too big, and they had nothing. They never matched that intensity again. I mean, even the fight between the brothers at the yeah. end, it's still nothing matched that first battle. That and first battle was just awesome. Like I said, it wasn't horrible. It was a good movie. It just was disappointing. I mean, Loki, I can't remember who the actor who played him, but he was really good. Yeah. Um... I felt Natalie Portman was pretty good in it. Um, Honestly, the person that I liked most in it, or the character I liked most in it, was the gatekeeper. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was uh, Idris Elba that played him, uh, who's been in a bunch of stuff. And I liked the guy. I mean, he yeah. was... Uh, and I, I liked him even more than I did Thor's companions. And he was only in it for like five minutes, but when, every time he was in it... He did something substantial, and he was cool. He was like, oh, I'm going to let you through, because this guy sucks, so let's overthrow him, you know? Like, he was just, he was awesome. He was and a great he's in the best movie of 2012, Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance. Well, I'm going to reserve judgment on that. I'm not going to go ahead and make that claim, because <laughs> I saw the first one. And I do love Idris Elba. He's a really good actor. Luther was one of my favorite shows that I watched last year, starring him. But, yeah, oh, we didn't even scratch on shows. 
TV shows are going to have to wait for next year or for next week because uh, we have Netflix, so we watch a lot of TV shows. Yeah, but we don't watch a lot of current TV shows. You don't. <laughs> I have a lot more free time on my hands right now, so I watch a lot of current That's TV true. shows. But anyway, last, uh, last little thing on movies, and then we'll move on to games, is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Did you see it? I have not seen it. I didn't either, and I have no plans to. You know why? Because it already existed for, like, five fucking years. I don't get this. I don't understand it. Like, if you saw The Departed and loved it, fuck you. I'll kick you in the nuts. Yeah. Infernal Affairs with Andy Lau. Andy Lau is one of the greatest actors in the world. That is one of the best movies yeah. in the world. And, and I like Matt Damon, but Andy Lau still played that yes. role a hundred times better. It was just, I, I, he had, do you know, do you, you never saw The Department? I, I've seen then. enough of The Department to know that it was basically a slow motion version of Infernal Affairs yeah, it, it's that almost, was scene for scene stolen. Yeah. And the fact that Scorsese got best director for that movie is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it's literally like a shot for shot remake. I've watched both movies in their entirety and it's fucking just complete ripoff. Like they changed almost nothing. Like, every scene that you loved in The Departed already happened almost a decade fucking earlier in fucking Japanese cinema, or Hong Kong cinema. Yeah, Hong Kong. And, like, that fucking, I don't know if you saw that travesty horror film, uh, Let Me In, don't see it. If you want to see a slow-paced vampire movie that has drama and build-up, watch the original, let the right ones in, because the... I don't see why they remake them when half the time all they do is add some more explosions or something. And you can't just take a good film and throw in a dash of Michael Bay and have it be good. It's going to be crap. Throwing in any dash of Michael Bay is yes. going to be crap. Yeah, I think we agree the on Transformer that. fans, you're fucking the problem, okay? You are the problem. You are. You are. And, uh, oh, you know one thing we didn't touch on? And, uh... My mom would kill me if I didn't. It's uh, the finale of the Harry Potter uh, ah, series. Yes. And I I didn't see it on any of the Oscar things. Maybe I missed it. But I don't believe it I, was. Like effects or picture or, uh, music, you know, something. It seems like it should have got some yeah. kind of mention since, you know, it, like, rules the world for a decade. I mean, J.K. Rowling's could have overthrown a government if she wanted to during this period. It, I, I think it deserved... At least nomination for the same reason, like Return of the King. I thought Return of the King was obviously. I think all of the Lord of the Rings trilogies, great movies, but I thought that was the weakest of the three movies. Oh yeah, and absolutely. I I feel like you know they they gave Stephen Jackson the Oscar, they gave the movie the Oscar, but I personally feel the Fellowship of the Ring is the best movie. I think it was the most suspenseful. You weren't just you know sitting there watching preparation for giant battles. Yeah. It was always something happening, which if you know, I read the book before I went in, so I knew what was going to happen. But for people who didn't, I, I think that was probably the best experience as a moviegoer. All right, this this movie rant time has taken a lot longer than we expected. So uh, let's uh, let's move on to games. 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 Um, so good choices of the year. Uh, the hands downs for me were Battlefield Three and Portal Two. Now Battlefield Three. Great online multiplayer. Uh, I don't, I have almost no complaints about it. Um, my only major complaint about Battlefield 3's online multiplayer is the fucking random spawns. I cannot tell you how pissed I get when I'm fucking playing. I get killed. I randomly spawn with my back turned to an enemy fucking player with his fucking noob tube aimed right the fuck at me. I get so fucking aggravated because I am somebody that obsesses over my kill-death ratio and if I finish a fucking round and have less than two to one kill-death, I get so pissed. And so that is my major complaint. It doesn't happen regularly, just every now and then. And then Portal 2, I strongly recommend to couples that are on the fence about whether they should stay together or break up, play Portal 2, and you will either bond for life or murder one of them in the fucking living room for not activating the portal and leaving you trapped between fucking lasers while turrets are shooting at you. So, I mean, it, it's, you know, I think it's the ultimate measure of a couple's worth and uh, longevity. 
And yeah, Portal 2 is, uh, and it's also a really great game. Uh, very, very well written. Um, a really good game. Uh, my game of the year is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. I know uh, everyone who knows me is immediately going to call the fanboy card. Uh, I am a fanboy, immediately, of The Legend of Zelda series. They have been fantastic, very high quality uh, games from beginning to this most recent one. Uh, the reason why I call it my game of the year, this game masters the Wii controls. Like, I've never played a game on the Wii that I felt really needed to be on the Wii. This game, with the uh, control schemes, the enemy design, the dungeon design, the best I've ever seen in any game ever made. Uh, I even went as far as saying it was my all-time favorite game right after I finished it. On retrospect, looking back at it, it was flawed. Yeah, you have uh, another fairy like uh, it's actually the sword this time that pops up every five fucking seconds to give you uh, tutorial hints that's annoying uh, you do reuse much of the area because it's a huge game on the Wii but the Wii as we know is not that powerful especially with the modern systems so there is a lot of reuse of the areas but they do enough to make it feel different and like I said the boss design the dungeon design the best I've ever seen in my entire life yeah, and now, on a related note there, there is one I forgot to mention, um, and that's the Ocarina of Time in 3D, and I forgot to mention it because I haven't played it uh, on 3DS, I don't have a 3DS, uh, because that's the only reason I would buy one, is to play that game, and now I am not biased, I don't think anybody can call me a Zelda fanboy, so uh, <laughs> I would just like to say, even though I haven't played it, probably greatest game of 2011. Is uh, Ocarina 3D. Um, can you can you show your arm to the camera? The, the, the other the other side. The other side. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can uh, pick that up, but that is a Triforce tattoo. That's a triangle. Uh, so I can I have a lot of little cousins, and uh, I like uh, to teach them geometry. Oh, okay. So it's uh, triangles. Um, it, it is a triangle tattoo. So uh, the biggest game, uh, the biggest two games of 2011, uh, were probably. Skyrim and uh, Modern, Modern Warfare. Warfare 3. And Modern Warfare 3, I spent a little time with, and it basically seemed to me like Modern Warfare 2 Black Ops 2.5. Um, it, it seemed like they stole some stuff from uh, Battlefield, uh, they stole some stuff from Homefront, even. Um, and they stole all the wrong stuff. Uh, I, I'm usually a Modern Warfare fan. Modern Warfare 2, I played from, like, release until literally sometime last year is when I stopped playing Modern Warfare 2. And I could not bring myself to buy Modern Warfare 3 because, like, they stole the restricted kits from Battlefield but they didn't steal the vehicular combat or the destructible environments. And if you want to take Battlefield's people from them, that's the way to do it. That's why they play the Battlefields, is for the destructible environments, for the vehicular combat. Like, why you would choose to steal the shit that they don't want and not add that shit, beyond me. I don't know what Modern Warfare's people were thinking. Yeah, the most frustrating... I work in the gaming industry, and the most frustrating thing for me to see is, if you look at the top 10 best-selling games of all time, Modern Warfare is listed on, I believe, 6 of 10. And it is the same fucking game. There's no innovation. It's like Madden, where they basically do the same thing because they know they're going to make money on it. So they don't rock the boat, they don't innovate, because they don't want to scare anybody. People are afraid of change. And people just keep buying in. It's the same thing with like the Transformers rant that I made about movies. That is the problem. The reason why we don't see people complaining that there's not enough innovation in the gaming industry is because that doesn't sell. What sells is the cookie-cutter, first-person shooters that, as Modern Warfare has proven, it sells, and it sells huge. And why wouldn't people keep pumping those out? Okay, and now on to Skyrim. Now, Skyrim, I've been playing recently, um, uh, and 
I also played New Vegas, and the reason I reference that is because it has one of the same big issues that New Vegas had, where uh, after a while, and uh, when shit builds up in the world, uh, like corpses, uh, basically because for some reason Bethesda, they never want to get rid of corpses, and I can somewhat understand that, you know, that, you know, it's the corpses don't disappear in real life or whatever, well, but I if think, you kill somebody in a city street... I think it's more that a lot of times they may have quest items on them, and they're right, afraid of... Right. But just despawn the people who don't have quest items. Either that, or, like, make a... At least in the cities, you know, if I murder somebody in a city, and this doesn't matter if it's now or like the like sixteen hundred times where like some of the games are, I guess probably even earlier than that, and they're set like in that frame, but you don't just leave murdered folk laying around the city. Somebody would clean that up. So they have like gels where they have a little fucking treasure chest where you get your items when you get arrested. So, if someone gets killed in a town, have the cops pick them up, have that body disappear, and their shit go into the treasure chest, you know? Then, hey, when you get arrested, you can make a quick stop and get that extra gold from those people you accidentally killed before. Whatever. Just figure out some way to fix it, because right now, by the way, I found out recently, if you're playing Skyrim, the fix from New Vegas does seem to work, where if your Skyrim's lagging really bad... First of all, turn off the autosaves. That'll probably fix it right there. But if it still continues, delete your game file. Not your saves, your game file. And then reinstall. And that cleans out the corpses. Or if you have floating dragons that randomly fall down every time, it should clean those up for you and eliminate all the lag. That being said, uh, let me I jump still like... Well, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you now. I just want to say... The, the, there still are, because I know he's going to rant forever. So I am going to rant I'm going to probably while. get up and grab a soda when he starts this, because I'm a little parched. But anyway, that being said, even with all the bugs, I still like Skyrim, but the bugs keep me from loving it. Like, I'm glad that it's his copy I'm playing, because if I spent $60 on it, I would be a little pissed. Um, just because the story's good, the combat is okay, it's nothing special by any means, if anything it's a little weak, it's just kind of basic, you just slash and block, and basically, if you have a sword and shield, then you're good to go, if you have any other weapon sets, you had better grind the shit out of your character and get those skills built up, or you're just going to get decimated. I learned that out because I went in dual wielding, and I was fine for a little bit, and then as I started facing tougher opponents, they would just decimate me. As soon as I equipped a shield, I was a fucking tank. And there were a couple times where there were pretty big glitches, especially with the dragons, which they put a lot of focus on the dragons. And I understand that the dragons attack towns, that's what they do, but it kind of sucks when, like, as soon as you fast travel to a town, a dragon swoops in and kills the blacksmith, and you're there to do a quest for the blacksmith, or you would like to buy some armor or whatever. So now you're just fucked out of that, or you gotta restart from a different save. Now luckily, if you have auto saves on, then you have 37 saves to choose from for the last five minutes. And there were a lot of uh, glitches, again, with the dragons, where, like, uh, one just flew straight up into the air and spiraled around during a cinematic scene where I couldn't hear anything because the dragon was just flying up in the air, just randomly spinning around for like the 15 minute dialogue exchange. So I didn't really know what was going on after that exchange. I just had to go to where it told me to go after that. So altogether, I'd give it an okay. Like a 3 out of 5, you know. If you like RPGs and you like doing that thing, the questing and scavenging, which I know some people that love scavenging through coffee cans and fall out. I don't know why they love scavenging so much, but they do. So those people will like it. Anybody that wants a fast-paced, fun game, though, go somewhere else. Not there. Not there. Yeah, alright. So, as you said, I'm going to rant about this. Because, well, I already talked about Skyward Sword. Um, the other games that... we both that, liked Portal 2. We Portal 2, that. yeah. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we actually played co-op and what... One cool thing that a lot of companies need to take from that, Steam set up, or Valve at least, a set up where you go through Steam 
and you could play. I played on my PC while Alan played on the PS3. Yeah, and yeah. I really don't understand that why there's not more cross-platform play, especially I mean, with the PC. I understand yeah. if you don't want your Xbox people playing with your PlayStation people. Right. I don't really understand it, but I guess Xbox Live costs money, and PSN is yeah, typically free. I, I mean, like. Oh. Through so many of the games, though, especially the ones that are charging for the online play now, that's another hook for you, you stupid bastards. People want to complain, which I don't see any complaints in, the, in making people pay if they buy a used copy to get that online privilege, because fuck you, you shouldn't be buying a used copy for five fucking dollars cheaper. Yeah. Just buy the new fucking copy and give the money to the people that made it. But... If they want to charge that and they want people to not be pissed about it, then why don't they make the cross-platform play? Then that's one thing that they can say, like, not only can you play online, you can play online with PC and Xbox and PS3 owners. I don't give a fuck if it's fucking Angry Birds and I can play it with my fucking buddy on the mobile phone. Anything would be fucking nice. Give us some cross-platform play. It cannot be that hard. Alright. Another... Good game I want to mention, and this is probably my sleeper pick. Uh, it is one of my favorite games of all time, is Catherine. It is a brilliant uh, puzzle game with an adult uh, storyline about this guy who's cheating on his girlfriend of many years with a younger woman. This and is not one I recommend you play with your girlfriend. No. Uh, you have these nightmares every night where you're trying to climb up this tower by moving these blocks and each block has their own set of rules. It also has these questions like you reach these checkpoints and you have these questions that really make you kind of look into yourself on how you answer them and it has a morality system that kind of shows you uh, what where your answers are going. It also shows you online if you're online with it it will show you what other people, the percentages of other people, and what they're saying on the, answering the questions. Uh, very cool game. Catherine, very, very good uh, anime, hand-drawn anime. Well, some of them seem anime. Uh, it, it's very good cutscenes, though. Uh, very good anime style. Uh, I don't believe they're hand-drawn. I believe it's CD. But uh, very good art style to it. Um, definitely worth check, uh, checking out. Uh, great puzzle game. Even has co-op. Uh, and it has a really good story from beginning to end, and it's not the typical story that you see in games. This one will have you, you know, not knowing what's getting ready to happen. And now what did you mention earlier? Uh, I did mention L.A. Noir. He did mention L.A. Noir, which I am going to say was the second best detective game that I saw in the past year or so. Second to Michael Nash... Interactive Detective Story. Now this game is free to play on YouTube. Just look up Michael Nash Interactive Detective Story. And what you do is uh, it's kind of like a choose your own story adventure book. Like when you were a kid and you'd be a meerkat or a turtle or whatever the fuck you were in those books. Only you are a world class detective out to solve crime. And it even has a supernatural twist. Yeah. So you look into that one. That one's fun. Now that guy who plays Michael Nash, sex some. He is a handsome man. He, he, he is, is very uh, good looking. I'm not gay, but some really good supporting there uh, characters in there too. But uh, that's enough time on that. Um, I did have a couple disappointing games uh, this year. Obviously, your big one was Skyrim. Um, I had two actually: Rage and Homefront. Actually, no, three. I forgot about that fucking X Men game. Uh, what the hell, X-Men... Uh, Legacy, I believe. Legacy, yeah. X-Men Legacy. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the preview for it, like, from the previous year, but they're like, you get to become your own mutant and choose your path. No, you don't. You pick one of three generic mutants and then have a skill tree that wouldn't be too bad because you get different powers and everything, but it has no effect on anything. It's the most linear... Worst fucking game, like, I, I forget what the uh, the one X-Men that they were bringing out or the Marvels or whatever where it's just like the top down and four people could play. Those were less linear than this. Like, it, it was fucking horrible. And most of the bosses were just easy to walk through. 
And so I was going to play through it and at least finish the game when I rented it. And then I got to a fucking Sentinel on a rooftop that was the most cheap fucking quarter eating son of a bitch I'd ever seen in my life. So I just took it back to Redbox. I didn't care anymore. Um, but then uh, Rage and Homefront. Back to those. Homefront. Online multiplayer, actually not bad. If more people would have gotten into the game, I think they would have liked it. It was actually a lot like uh, Star Wars Battlefronts. Uh, that's what it reminded me of with the uh, multiplayer. And it was actually really fun. But they fucking had no support for the online. So the online was fucked up for like the first two weeks it was out. So the people that played the one player campaign and didn't want to wait for the multiplayer... We're disappointed as shit because the multiplayer, the single player campaign was disappointing because it's a common first person multiplayer shooter, which they don't care about the single player, you know, it's just something for people that are stupid and live in a cave and don't have the internet to do to kill time. Everybody else, like, I haven't even played the single player on Battlefield 3, I've played like the first couple levels. Nobody buys Battlefield or Modern Warfare for single player. And Homefront was the same way. But, that being said, the graphics were crap. If the graphics were better, I could have gotten behind it a little more and tried to get more people to join the online. But, I mean, you can tell somebody a girl's the best lay at the ball, but if she ain't pretty enough to make her take a second look, she's not getting laid till the end of the night when they're drunk. But anyway, uh, Rage is the other one, because Rage was from some decent developers, had a lot of money poured into it, it was a big production. If you, if there's any fans of Borderlands out there, basically imagine Borderlands with far fewer weapons, uh, less RPG elements actually, and no fun co-op play. And you have Rage, so basically... You kept some good things about Borderlands, prettied it up a bit, depending on your system performance, because it looked horrible sometimes, because they just didn't manage their resources well, I guess, and you take the fun stuff out of Borderlands and you get Rage. Um, Rage was another one that I'm glad I rented before I bought, because two days of playing Rage and I no longer cared to buy it, I just took it back and was glad I was only out like $3 from Redbox, so... Those are my disappointments of the year. Alright, well that is going to wrap up episode one of the Fear Nuts Hour. Which, the best half hour show on the internet I think was like 40 something minutes. Yeah, there's no telling, but uh, you know, we could edit it down half hour. We I mean, will not. go either way. 